Hello everyone. Welcome back to our channel. Today we will continue to talk about how to read and check strand stressing record part 2. We hope it can benefit to all the engineers who are involved in assessing stressing records submitted by the specialist contractor. Before that, thank you for still staying with us and please help us to subscribe, like, and share our channel to other engineers. Here is a quick run through on types of stressing jack available. There are two types of stressing jack, namely mono jack and multi jack. A mono jack is used to stress a single strand one at a time, whereas a multi jack is used to stress a higher number of strands per tendon. All the strands are stressed simultaneously in a bun. Later in our video, we will only touching elongation recording sample based on the second end stressing only and before lock off for both type of jacks. For two stressing end tendon, it is not necessary to apply a preliminary force at second stressing end. Preliminary force is only applicable at first stressing end in order to eliminate the take up in the tensioning system. However, if the specialist contractor proposed to start recording by applying preliminary force at second stressing end, it is still acceptable. For recording start with preliminary force, remember to extrapolate and get corrected elongation value later on. At least three readings are required for the operator to record. Recorded elongation from the first stressing end need to be corrected according to actual full force. You can refer to part 1 for further detailed explanation. From the first stressing end corrected elongation value, we will need to add second stressing end elongation in order to get a total elongation for that tendon. For those recording using zero pressure, we can use the length difference between final pressure and zero pressure as second stressing end elongation. This is an example for the operator to calculate total elongation when the second stressing end recording start from zero pressure. The total elongation is 179 mm. For those recording started with preliminary pressure, we can use extrapolation in order to get corrected elongation at second end. Then, add up with first stressing end corrected elongation and you will get total elongation for that tendon. This is an example for operator to calculate total elongation when the second stressing end recording start from preliminary pressure. The total elongation is 178.5 mm. As mentioned in part 1, using mono jack will only permit the stressing to be done strand by strand. Therefore, all the elongation from each strand in the same tendon will be averaged up in representing the tendon elongation. Next, Calculate the percentage of deviated elongation from the recordings at site with calculated theoretical value. The percentage becomes part of the verification done by the designer and operator in applying tensioning force considering all the relevant short-term losses. Either one stressing or two stressing end, we will always need to check the recorded wedge in value. Wedge in can be checked after releasing pressure from final pressure to preliminary pressure. If the designer considered 6 mm wedge in in the design calculation, then the recorded wedge in needs to be same or less than 6 mm. If it is more than 6 mm, justification from the tensioning system supplier is needed. For multi-jack stressing, we recommend to apply preliminary force at second stressing end to eliminate additional take up in the tensioning system. Operator need to extrapolate the reading and get corrected elongation value later on. The recording is in 1000 intervals so that the operator are able to check linearity of graph and elongation versus force. It shows important data whether the strand is still in elastic state or yielded. Recorded elongation from the second stressing end need to be corrected according to actual full force. You can refer to part 1 for more detailed explanation. From the first stressing end corrected elongation value, we will need to add second stressing end elongation in order to get a total elongation for that tendon. This is an example for operator to calculate total elongation when the second stressing end recording start from preliminary pressure. The total elongation is 230.3 mm. However, please bear in mind that this calculated elongation is inclusive of elongation within jack body. As mentioned in part 1, using multi-jack need to minus elongation within jack body if we adopt before lock-off recording method. Therefore, all corrected elongation need to minus elongation within jack body. Next, calculate the percentage of deviated elongation from the recordings at site with calculated theoretical value. The percentage becomes part of the verification done by the designer and operator in applying tensioning force considering all the relevant short-term losses. Either one stressing or two stressing end, 
we will always need to check the recorded wedge in value. Wedge in can be checked after releasing pressure from final pressure to preliminary pressure. The difference in elongation consists of elongation within jack body and wedge in. After minus elongation within jack body, then the balance is the wedge in. If the designer considered 6 mm wedge in in the design calculation, then the recorded wedge in needs to be same or less than 6 mm. If it is more than 6 mm, justification from the tensioning system supplier is needed. Here are additional several important notes to share. We need to prepare tendon cutting list together with tendon marking and coil certificate. If the tendon did not fulfill the acceptance range and percentage difference in elongation, you can recalculate back the theoretical elongation using new area of strand and new modulus of elasticity as stated in coil certificate. For stressing jack, please ensure the equipment have locking adapter. Locking adapter will hold wedges in place and control wedge in loss during releasing of stressing pressure. Always monitor and check wedge in for each tendon. For two stressing ends, prepare marking at other stressing end and recheck after finish stressing. This is to check whether the other stressing end strand gripping is still intact or slipped during stressing. If the marking moving from the original position, the strand is slip at wedge. Rectification need to be done. Averaging of deviated percentage from theoretical elongation can only be done within design strip. Inspector should not only checking on stressing record and elongation but also checking on each tendon stressing pressure. Lastly, please ensure the tendon dead end length is complying to detail drawing. Too short bonded length may create insufficient bonding issue and too long bonded length may create slightly less elongation result. That's all for today. Thanks for watching and following us. We see you again in the next video. Bye.